This might be my longest new releases video ever. I apologize or you're welcome. <laughs> Hello everyone, my name is Holly and October is finally here, which means I'm marathoning horror books while eating mountains of candy and arguing with your friends whether or not candy corn belongs in your mouth or the trash. I'm not going to share my opinion on that. Today we are going to be talking about all the best books releasing in the month of October, which is a lot of creepy spooky reads. So as always, I can't talk about all of them. So if I miss one, let us know down in the comments. We are in the peak part of the year where we're just getting smothered with new books. And I gotta say, with how exciting they all sound, I'm not complaining. And if you're someone who likes to pre-order books, you can click the buy links down below in the description box. So because there are so many on this list. Let's go ahead and begin. Starting on October 4th, we have Loot. This is a classic horror folktale inspired story that takes place during World War II on an isolated island. Our main character, Nina, who lives in Florida, moves to this island called Loot, which is blessed with good fortune. While all the land surrounding it is war torn, she has heard rumors that seven people are sacrificed every seven years, but she doesn't think it's true. So it sounds like it's worth the risk to go there. Uh, this is supposed to be very atmospheric, creepy. I love the cover. It kind of has like an otherworldly vibe to it and maybe that reflects in the story. The Witch in the Well. The setting for this one sounds unique as hell as the scenes take place in a castle-like house within the backdrop of a creepy Norwegian forest. We have two former friends turned bitter rivals who are both writing a novel about a local legend. And that local legend is a woman drowned as a witch. The story is told entirely through written sources such as letters, journal entries, emails, which sounds very fun. Um, probably going to have an investigation feel to it, like you are personally the one trying to solve the mystery. So it's going to allow the reader to feel immersed into the story even more. And then I have Jackal. There's a lot of books that I'm very excited about on this list, and this is uh, one near the top of that list. The cover slays me every single time. This is a gripping mystery novel following Liz, who grew up in Pennsylvania and has returned for her best friend Mel's wedding. Well, when Mel's daughter goes missing, Liz is determined to find her. However, she doesn't expect what she will come to learn of this town and its history of missing girls. The story brings direct attention to racism, class differences, and hatred, and takes place in the author's hometown, which I think is really cool. So the accuracy of the landscape and environment is probably going to be pretty spot on. A Dowry of Blood. You've probably seen this book before. In fact, I'm sure it was in a past new releases video of mine, but Orbit Books acquired this horror story and is republishing it in this beautiful new hardcover edition. So let's talk about it. The core of the story is about vampires. So if you like dark alley aesthetic with brooding castles smeared with blood, you will find this book to your liking. It's following our main character, Costanta, as she is saved from death by a mysterious stranger. He offers her a choice to turn into a vampire like him, warning her that she will have to leave everything behind. And what begins as a sort of love story between these two uh, leads to much darker secrets. Very much your perfect Dracula story for October, so be sure to add this one to your list if you didn't read the previous edition. It rides a pale horse, so Andy Marino is back with yet another horrifying novel. This one honestly sounds like it could be a weird movie. We have two characters, Lark and Betsy, who are brother and sister, and they both are artists. Lark is a famous artist, while Betsy is a recluse who doesn't leave the house. When Lark sets out to deliver one of his sculptures to an unknown buyer, he's informed by them that they have taken Betsy, and unless he can recreate some famous painting, she will not be returned, or worse, she will be killed. I think that is a very interesting take on horror literature, adding a strange twist to the fine arts that I think only Andy Moreno can accomplish. Um, the cover is definitely creepy. And finally, moving on to a new date, we have October 11th, and I have a non-horror book for you, and that is If You Could See the Sun. This is a YA contemporary mixed with magical realism, but it's mostly an academic-based story following Alice, who is a working-class student who often feels invisible as the only scholar scholarship student amongst her peers, despite being at the top of her class in this elite Beijing school. She then finds out that her parents can't afford her school fees anymore, and suddenly, 
she starts to actually turn invisible, but she uses it to her advantage as one would expect. I think this book is going to have a lot of great messages about what truly matters in the end. Also, I want to mention I think Rivals to Lovers is also a trope in the story because I know a lot of you guys like that. So if you're not into all the creepy books coming out in October, this one might fit you better. River of Silver. Fans of S.A. Jacoporti's trilogy will be excited as it is getting an expansion novel with the River of Silver, a compilation of stories from before, during, and after the events of the first three books. Apparently, these stories gather material both seen and new, making this the perfect complement to those incredible novels. City of Brass was quite monumental when it came out following a con artist in the 18th century, and I believe this book will add so much more to that story while revisiting that lush world. Each short story is completely independent of each other, and I'm sure this is going to be on, on a lot of anticipated lists. We have yet another republication and that is will do magic for small change tor is republishing this novel in hardcover and it's getting a fresh coat of paint with an updated cover. I think they did a great job on it. It's an adult sci-fi mix with fantasy smothered in African history. It's a story that drives two narratives. We have Cinnamon Jones, a black girl living in the 1980s who has always dreamed of becoming an actress. Unfortunately, her brother passed away and left her with a book written by an alien wanderer from another dimension who is our second narrative. And they get caught up in the life of a warrior woman searching for her dead brother's wife. There's a lot going on in this one. Sounds very rich and innovative and I really like how they showcase the two stories like merging together on the cover. Next up I have The Spare Man. This author who is very well known and beloved is releasing a historical meets science fiction meets murder mystery novel. The setting takes place on an interstellar cruise ship which has um, a bit of a jazz age vibe to it. We follow Tesla and her husband Shal who are on their honeymoon. Just you know taking a leisurely cruise to Mars except that there's a murder and Shal is framed for it. So it's up to Tesla to figure out who who is the murderer. It kind of reminds me of an Agatha Christie novel a bit. So instead of like murder on the Orient Express, we have murder on the interstellar cruise ship. I do want to mention the main character Tesla suffers from chronic pain and PTSD, so some disability rep as well. And I think overall the story sounds action-packed, and it could be a very addicting read. Little Eve, which is Catriona Ward's gothic horror novel that came out in 2018, is also being re-released, which makes sense as it was quite a hit. Um, it won the Shirley Jackson Award. It's following two women and four children who live in a remote Scottish castle within a cult-like environment run by a man named Uncle. And this book details their daily lives and their beliefs within this cult. It's a twisty and grisly tale, not for the faint of hearts, um, highly recommended for fans of crime books and especially if you're into like cult psychology which is obviously heavily present. Okay, let's move on to a more lighthearted read. I have Where the Lost Ones Go. This is a paranormal middle grade novel, but not paranormal in like a creepy sense. We're following a 12 year old Elliot whose grandmother recently passes away and is forced to move across the country. And while in her new town, she's dared to knock on a rumored haunted house. And she thinks she might have found a way to get in contact with her grandmother to give her a proper goodbye. I know I say lighthearted, but this is probably emotional and bittersweet. So if you're looking for a little bit of a spoopy middle grade to read on October, definitely check this one out. To pile on more to your sci-fi stack, we have The Immortality Thief. It has one of my favorite tropes and that it's following a motley crew of mercenaries who are forced into recovering a powerful artifact that is rumored to be on a haunted, nameless, abandoned ship. Or is it abandoned? The characters are pitched against rival forces and deadly aliens, including like gruesome monsters, scary space creatures, all against the backdrop of a failing spaceship and a dying sun. So maybe some light dystopian elements thrown in too. Um, it sounds really in interesting. Definitely a tight sounding plot for your like typical scary sci-fi trope of finding like a deserted ship that might have aliens on it. Um, I feel like we see that trope a lot, especially in video games as well. Hopefully this author can add a twist to it, make it interesting, and I'm excited to see how well this one does. Dead Man's Hand. I thought that was such a weird title for a book until I looked closer at the cover and realized the premise of the book is actually about the main character's hand. <laughs> this is written by Jim Butcher's son, James Butcher, so a very famous name attached to this one. And I'll be honest, this one sounds 
sounds like a goofy, humorous fantasy the more I found out what it's about. We're following a character with a very interesting name, Grimshaw Griswold Grisby. I'd sue my parents if I was named that. He is a wizard, but he doesn't have much magic. In fact, he's quite broke, down on life, but things change when he is confronted by a man who tells Grimshaw that the woman who put him in this predicament, working at a burger joint, is dead, and the magic police thinks he is responsible. Thus begins the fight for his life and his ability to buy more ramen. If you're looking for a serious fantasy, this clearly isn't it. Um, maybe more on the lighthearted side, but it sounds like an interesting first book to a series. The Dark Between the Trees. So this is a dark woods horror, so perfect for the month of October. It tells a tale of soldiers who went missing in the darkness of Moresby Wood back in the 1600s, while present day, it's following a group of women who set out to discover what happened to those soldiers so many years ago. They enter this mysterious forest where things are not what they seem. I'm assuming it's going to alternate between past and present while slowly resolving the mystery. It sounds like a very atmospheric read. It gives me major like gothic folk horror vibes where um, mysterious ancient monsters may or may not exist in the forest, especially that cover. Um, reviewers have labeled it as a claustrophobic read, which totally makes sense. On October 18th, we have Night of the Raven Dawn of Dove. This is a medieval Indian YA fantasy about a sassy guardswoman, a handsome monk, and a plethora of monsters. At least that's exactly what the author said. We follow our main character, Katyani, who has this bond with the queen. She doesn't remember who she is or where she comes from, except for what the people around her have told her. She is apparently the prince's bodyguard and they are sent to a training school. It is here that Katyana learns that she should start questioning those around her. She does so, but doesn't get much of a chance before uh, total war breaks out. This war changes the course of her life. Um, it is a big blend of action, adventure, court politics, and intrigue and romance with the inclusion of South Asian culture and mythology. It sounds rich and full of depth. Lavender House. I actually plan to read this one in October and I'm really, really pumped about it. Um, it's set in the 1950s and it's a murder mystery. We have a secretly queer family that owns a soap company and their matriarch dies a very mysterious death and a recently fired cop is brought into their mansion to suss it out and find out whose fault it was. Reviewers have said that found family is the trope at its core, which I am really interested to see um, how it's woven into the threads of the mystery. I want to mention this book is being compared to Knives Out, which is a very strange and complex movie, um, which makes me hope this one like goes in that same direction. On the 25th, we have Into the Riverlands. This is the third book in the Singing Hills Cycle. It's a series of standalone novellas that you can jump into at any um, time. All of them basically take place in this fantastical world where we follow Chi, who is a cleric, so their job is to document history and to travel across the lands and make sure that history is being recorded. So each book follows her in different places, meeting different people, and obviously this one, she travels to the Riverlands. This series has some of the most artistic covers I've ever seen. Actually, this author in general has some of the best covers, and I have not read these yet, and I desperately want to, and they're all really short, and now there's a third one. I don't know if this is the final one or not, but it's here for you. <laughs> Into the Wind Racked Wild. This is Shauna McGuire's newest installment in the Up and Under series. It's a series that is often compared to Wizard of Oz. It's kind of a dark fairy tale based world that two children are lost in. It is connected to the middle game universe, but you can read these without having read that book. I love the cover. I think it gives off such a whimsical vibe and that's exactly what these are. Whimsical, strange, just like the previous book I talked about. I don't know if this is the last one or not or if there will be more, but I will keep you updated. The Rabbit's Gift. This is a very imaginative middle grade fantasy novel set in an alternate world where rabbits grow human babies and cabbage-like plants. In exchange for the service, humans provide the rabbits with the purple carrots they need to survive. It sounds a little weird, but also it looks kind of cute. <laughs> this is also the author of The Wolf's Curse, which I talked about in a past new releases video. Um, I'm not sure if this is connected to that or not, but this author is after my own heart. As she writes about animal characters, often it seems like, so I need to read this. And finally, the very last book I'll be talking about today is The Atlas Paradox. 
This is the highly anticipated sequel of The Atlas Six, which is a book that blew up in the book community, specifically TikTok, I feel. But this one starts right off where the last one ended. It's a dark academia-based novel set in a fantastical magic-based world where each decade, the world's six most talented magicians are selected for initiation into the Alexandrian society. Those who earn a place will secure a life of wealth, power and prestige beyond their wildest dreams so this is the continuation of that story i'm sure a lot of you are very excited about this one okay so that is going to be it for my list today this might be my longest new releases video ever i apologize or you're welcome i hope you found something that tickles your fancy this october if so let us know what you're excited about, what you'll be picking up. I know there's a lot of books that I miss, so tell us what you would like to add to this list. Um, like this video, subscribe if you like this type of content because I do new releases videos every single month to keep you in the know on what is coming out. So until we meet again, happy reading.